But now we can now we can be recording. That's great. And we're going to close this because nobody cares about that. And I'm going to close this because nobody cares about that. I'm going to minimize that. I really have to do something about all of the things that are going on in my computer screen so that my computer can keep up with what I'm doing. Alrighty. There we go. I think I got it. All right, so let's see. We're recording everywhere. I have the book. I have my paints. What? Yes, I have paints. I have water. I have brushes. I have art supplies that I made. And I have beer. The kids are outside playing in the sprinkler. They don't want anything to do with this right now because they're, you know, they're 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 playing the sprinkler. It's it's like 110, like 110. It's like 88 with 110 percent humidity. Look, there's more anonymous people. Uh, the wife is in the house cooking dinner for them. She's peeling uh, mash, uh, sweet potatoes. Mom's still in Oklahoma. Eldest girl and the grandbaby are still in Oklahoma. Boy one is still in Oklahoma with his fiance. Uh, oh, she's gorgeous. If you get a chance, if you're following me on Facebook and you ever see me post about boy one, go go ahead and scroll on over and and. Uh, uh, what do you call that? Stalk my, stalk my future daughter-in-law. She's just a stunner. <sighs> hey, Jay said. So let's see. Where are we? Um, okay, take your headphones off. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Artistic Biker Live. How's everybody doing? I know you can't tell me how you're doing. That's just something we say. I, nobody really cares. Anyway, I do care how you're doing. I just can't respond. Um, this weekend, I went to a retreat. It's not really a retreat. went to this guy's studio in the back of his house, but he's a retired art teacher, and his wife's a retired music art teacher, something collegiate level, and they got all this knowledge, and every year they spend two weeks traveling, at least two weeks traveling around the world, researching and learning how to do stuff and they do really cool stuff in this studio and, and he's where i go on tuesday nights to go to draw the naked people and and he had a workshop this weekend on how to make art supplies the, the way that leonardo would have made art supplies and it's really cool it was well i don't think it's exactly the way leonardo would have made art supplies because i'm pretty sure that uh there was no um plastic involved in the way that Leonardo would have made art supplies. But beyond that, I mean, everything else was pretty much the same. It's uh, pretty cool stuff. Let me show you some of the stuff. Got any ideas for using up glitter? Well, uh, Jay, have you considered spreading it around on the mattress? Uh, that's a different discussion altogether. Let's, let's talk about the art supplies. So I'm going to show you... Uh, we made watercolor. We, we took pigment. You can't see that. We took pigment, and we took emulsion, and we took gum arabic, and we, we mulled it around on a table with a muller until we got it mixed up just right. You, this cracked because it doesn't have enough honey in it. You can't see it. This cracked because it didn't have enough honey in it. But we're going to play with that here in a little bit. We made this color. My partner, our, the the uh, the team next to us, the partnership next to us, made this beautiful blue that we're going to play with that tonight also. But that's not all we made. I mean, we made. Let me get this out of the way. My studio is a mess because we've been building shelves and stuff back here. If I ever get this cleaned out, you guys are just going to be completely shocked with what we do. But we made pastels. Three different types of pastels, with three different types of uh, three different types of emulsion, um, gum arabic, tragacanth, and ball clay. Wait, ball clay, gum arabic, and tragacanth. Uh, I don't know. We made, but we made three different types of of, uh, uh, of uh, pastels, and then we made a graphite. Pastel, pa a graphite stick, and I'm going to I'm going to do a lot of drawing with this, and then we made charcoal. We cut up. He he had some willow vines, and and we and that he had uh, 
skin the bark off of and made sure that there were no naughty parts because the knots explode in the fire. We wrapped them up and we at the beginning of the session we wrapped them up in, in tin foil and put them in a, put them in the fire uh, and left them there until we were done and then when we were done we went and got until the, the four hours later and then we went and got them out of the fire and, and this is what we ended up with with sharp oak. So we're going to play with some of these art materials tonight and I'm going to talk about how they were made. And I think over the next few weeks, we may actually make some art supplies on the show, and I'll share recipes with you, and, and we'll have some fun. But tonight, I just want to I just want to journal a little bit about these things. Last week on the Artistic Biker, we had been playing with I had been playing with uh, clouds, making clouds with spray paint, and I and I painted this just before the show just to see if it if it could be done. And then once I discovered it could be done, I decided to do it live in front of a studio audience, uh, internet audience, if you will. And so we did this. And, and if you weren't watching last week, look at this. Look how much better that looks with the light on it. I want to learn how to paint that kind of lighting. <laughs> I, need to, I need to learn how to make my pages look illuminated like that because that's just pretty cool. <laughs> but it doesn't look like that when you turn the light off of it. It, it kind of looks, the paint all dried a little bit dull. But we still had fun doing it. Still had fun doing it. Anyway, this week I am going to work with my new art supplies that I made. So I'm going to turn the page and get started. So the uh, taking a class, taking a, taking a class like that. If you've ever taken a class like that, tell me about what kind of classes you've taken. We'll chat about it if you're in the chat room. Chat about it. What I'm doing. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, know that I I did this show in front of a live audience on UStream at theartisticbiker.com/slash UStream. That's the letter U. Stream. Uh, anyway, and we can we can chat about what kind of workshops you guys have taken, and then let me know in the comments on the YouTube video. What what workshops you have taken? What workshops you enjoyed the most? If you've taken if you've taken a bunch of workshops, I want to know what workshop you you've enjoyed the most because this one was fun simply because I like hearing about the history of the art supplies. But quite honestly, we didn't really get in depth on anything that you couldn't have learned on YouTube. Except this guy had a lot of first-hand knowledge of the the uh, world of having having traveled the traveled traveled the world to gather materials, and he's had a lot of students, so he had a lot of anecdotes to share with us about the the art supplies and the material. And he's a great great guy, great instructor. But as far as material to learn, uh, it really wasn't really wasn't much more than you could learn on on YouTube so what what classes if you will what workshops have you taken that you felt like you got the most out of that you enjoyed the most and let me know in the comments below because I've got some I've got some that I'm going to I've got some others that I'm going to attend and I've got some ideas on putting some on I just don't know where I would do it now that I don't have a public studio anymore. Having moved out of my studio in Chickasha, America, and now living the dream here in Houston, America, it's all great, but... Hi, little girl. Hello. What are you doing in your PJs? Are we going to? You can't come on the internet in your pajamas. I have a towel. You can't come on the internet in your pajamas. Is Save that. that. I s just said you cannot come on the internet in your pajamas. And then you decide to walk over in front of the camera. I'm not in front of the camera. And you're not going to be either. You will stay your happy little girl self over there. Love you. We do not come out on the internet half dressed. We save that for college. I am. Oh my God. <laughs> long 
goodness. Hi, Kimberly. Let me dry this real quick. We're going to have to do multiple layers tonight because part of what we're doing is watercolor. We're going to come back in with the absorbent ground so that the watercolors could stick. I made this I made this heater you guys you guys watching regular fans have seen this but I made this dryer here where I can turn this light on and that fan to blow heat across there so that I can uh, I can dry stuff kind of as I go but the light shines right in my eyes and it messes up what you guys can see I mean look at the spotlight that it gives you and I I've decided that I'm going to have to replace that with an infrared. If I can find me an infrared bulb, a heat, a heat lamp bulb, I'm going to replace that with an infrared or heat lamp bulb. But then I have to worry about shielding my eyes so it doesn't burn my eyeballs. But anyway, I've got the fan on so it helps it dry as we go. So it doesn't. We don't have to run the. We don't have to run the uh, hair dryer quite as much. Plus, I have a fan behind me blowing straight down on it too because it's hot. It's Africa hot. It's only it's only about 88 degrees, 80 to 80, 85 to 88 degrees here. But the humidity is seriously I you, I think you could swim out there. I think you could just go out there and just start swimming. So I've coated the page with gesso. Actually, I coated it with kills, but that's the same stuff as acrylic gesso. And I'm going to put uh, I'm gonna put two quick coats of, of absorbent ground on here because that'll help the that'll help the watercolors act more like watercolors instead of just pooling on top. Goodness gracious, I have considered figuring out a way to secure these pages so that they don't move around while I paint, but I just don't care that much. <laughs> so there is coat one. I'm gonna dry that real quick. Oh yeah, Kimberly, you remember my wife. My wife has curly hair. Kimberly's in the chat room talking about how humidity sucks. My wife has naturally, naturally kinky hair. And uh, her hair in Oklahoma comes down to the middle of her back. But in Houston, it's just shoulder length. And they actually have on the when we watch the the local weather one of the symbols they use to to uh, to talk about humidity when they're when they're talking about what the humidity is going to be like for the day is they've got a a, a a a cartoon redhead with kinky hair and it'll it'll show it you know either like this or straighter or let you know what the humidity is going to be like for the day. It'd be kind of nice if we could get breezes like we had in Oklahoma where the wind never, ever, ever stops. But where we are, if I go outside my neighborhood right here, you, can, you can't hardly tell the wind's blowing at all. The way the trees and the houses are aligned. 
so we just have heavy hot air I sat in there in my chair the other night stripped off my, my shirt stripped off my socks went and got a pair of shorts sat down in my chair and all I could think was I need to install a fan right there I just want a fan right there to just blow right at me well, I said we could turn down the air conditioner. I ain't made a money, woman. I'm willing to buy a fan and install it and turn it on, but I'm not willing to turn the air conditioner down two degrees. Man's got limits, you know. <laughs> Alright, let's put the second coat on here. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go across for this coat. No particular reason. It's not I have no no particular reason for going a different direction this time. Other than I didn't go this direction last time. <laughs> oh look at me flicking paint over there. I need to I've got a new monitor. And I need to get a plastic cover on it before I get it covered in, in uh, paint and spray paint, huh? Oh, goodness. So, you know, uh, last week my daughter and my granddaughter were still here. We loved having them here so much. It's just been super quiet since they left. I'm hoping, hoping they come back soon. It's just been so super quiet since they left. But I didn't know where I was going with that. I just was thinking, I guess when I turned the noise off, it got quiet in here, and I thought, well, man quiet. That's just like it's quiet because my God. That's alright. She'll be back. I think I'm going to go next week and I think I'm going to go to Oklahoma and see her. Okay, maybe we can get together and have a cup of coffee while I'm there. Pamela, you too if you're willing to drive. Meet you somewhere in Oklahoma. We have a cup of coffee. All right, let me drive this layer, and then we'll move on to the background process. You guys can't even see what I'm doing. Somebody could have said, hey, wrong camera. Now you don't need that camera. Look at me from the other side. <gasps> you got cameras all over the place. What is this guy? Some kind of camera nut? Uh... One of the one of the friends I met at the workshop. Cast name is Graham. He's got a he's got a YouTube channel too. He he was going to send it to me. I haven't seen it yet. But we were talking about how he he just records his video with his GoPro and uh, edits them with iVideo and uploads them straight to. YouTube. I'm like, wow, dude, because I've got like Vid Blaster and Power Director and six cameras. And Somebody. I may have dove off the deep end on the video hobby. But I love it. Let's me give you different views of what's going on. Let you see my mess over there. Hi, Linda Ray.
Linda, I'm sorry about last week. Last week was a short show. The show went so fast. Just about the time Linda Ray logged in was about the time I was leaving. I feel like you got I feel like you got cheated out of last week's exciting performances. Truthfully, if we were doing this right, I would let that ground I would let that ground cure between each le each uh, coat. The instructions. This is absorbent ground. This is golden gessos and grinds absorbent ground. And what it does is it it turns any it, it turns any surface that it'll stick to uh, into a watercolor paper. So if you took like a hubcap. And you'd have to sit you'd have to sand the hubcap down a little bit to make sure that uh, that it was a rough enough surface that the that it would stick to it want it suggests that you primer that you primer first it says uh, uh, maybe thinned up to re refer to golden website for instructions on using as a primer for oil paints maybe thinned up to 25 percent water to improve leveling Apply on a gessoed supports allow each layer to dry completely between coats. Multiple coats increase the absorbency. Uh, due to the fragile absorbent quality of the ground, finished paintings need to be protected. Best adhesion on clean, non-oily surfaces, clean with soap and water. So there's all the instructions there. But truly, I find the best thing to do is to let it sit for 20 minutes to an hour between each between each coating, especially if you can put a put it in the sun or put a bright light on it. I find that if you put it if you let it set for 20 minutes to an hour between each coat and, and let it you know cure, let the let the, uh, the the binder cure to the page, I find that it, it works a lot better. But for our purposes, it's going to be fine just like it is. So let's start with let's break out our toys over here. So like I was saying. These are the things that we made in the workshop this weekend. I made a graphite stick, which is basically just ball clay, uh, a custom emulsion. Oh, I made some. Also made some, uh, and it's in the refrigerator. I made some uh, oak gall ink, and I made some. I made some gum arabic. I made some tragacanth. Uh, emulsion, and I made a custom emulsion that he made up, that my instructor made up, to 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 uh, so that he can use that one emulsion for all of his all of his uh, uh, pastels, so that he doesn't have to make a custom emulsion every time he goes up. So he just makes that in a big batch. Daniel Smith brand uh, it can be a pain in the. I don't know. You, Linda Ray's talking about the absorbent ground. She wonders if it's the same as the Daniel Smith brand. I don't, I don't know. I've never tried the Daniel Smith brand. This is the this is the first jug I bought, and I bought it five six years ago. And I, you can see, I still have most of it because usually when I want watercolor, if I want a watercolor in my book, most of the time I'll break out the spray adhesive and a piece of watercolor paper, and I'll just spray adhesive and mat the watercolor paper into my book. But I kind of wanted to go. I want kind of wanted to go all in with this one. So let's start. Let's play with this charcoal for a second here. These two types of charcoal that we made. This one. This one. Can't really see it. This one we put in a tin can and put a and and seal it and set it in the fire. And then and then this one we had wrapped in aluminum foil and. Have about four layers of aluminum foil to protect it. And what I found when we tried it in the classroom, I find that this one, the, the one that we put in the aluminum foil, and this is just a thin little stick. I'm going to change cameras. I need to change cameras. This is just a, hi Carrie, this is just a thin little stick of, uh, I think it was willow, 
and, and we just wrapped it in it, we just wrapped it in aluminum foil and stuck it into a, a fire like a like a charcoal fire that was dying down like if you were going to cook out like a barbecue and then we we just wrapped these sticks up in the in the tin foil and stuck them in the fire and then and then let it go we didn't do anything else we didn't go out and stoke it or do anything else and so I find when I was playing with this one it takes a light touch because it's very it's very very gen very very fragile but I find that this one has the most velvet feel to it don't don't try to see patterns somebody's gonna shout out I see a face this one had a nice smooth velvet feel to it and I can see I could see enjoying doing a whole drawing with this except for the fact that I don't like dust on my fingers <laughs> This one, this was the one. It was this is the same stuff, and you can see this one shrank when we when we did it. This was the same, the exact same stuff. But he, like I said, he put it in a tin can, and it was a tin can like this. It was just an old empty paint can. He had three little three little nail holes in the top of it to allow for the uh, for the for the smoke to escape. Yeah, we made our own art supplies. Yeah, and so uh, this one I find is a little a little harder. It doesn't make the same. You can see, I'm using the same soft touch, and it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't make near the, near the mark. And if I actually put pressure on it to make a mark, I risk scarring the paper, scarring the ground and and the gesso off the paper. The amount of pressure that I have to put. Of course, I broke it right there, and it's actually making a better mark where it was broken. But it's bigger, and I can. And I can do stuff like this. There, where it crumbled, it's actually it's actually doing better than it than it had been. So that was pretty cool. I, I could, like I said, I could, I could see, I could see having fun with that. And the best thing about that is, is if you've got a, if you if you barbecue, if you if you do weekend barbecues or or if you have a chimney, and this was the thing I always thought about. What I was thinking about during the whole time he was showing us how to do it was. We could sit out there in the backyard in the wintertime because, you know, it doesn't get below 60 here. We could sit out there in the backyard in the wintertime with chimney going and, and drink beer and, and at the end of the night just have a tin foil wrapped up in sticks and throw it in there and let the chimney burn out while we finish off the rest of the beer and go to bed the next morning come out and have charcoal and just do that all winter long and just have an endless supply of charcoal. But then I just have to figure out how to, how to hold it because I can't. The dust on my fingers feels funny. All right, I know I'm weird. And then let's see, let's move on to the, let's move on to the uh, pastels. This is the first pastel we made. And this was a Mediterranean blue and a lot of calcium carbonate and some ball clay. And it's real, real easy to make. Uh, but we put. You know, he, he kept telling us, you know, you can put quite a bit of calcium carbonate in there and, and that blue will be really vivid, but uh, we didn't feel like the blue was near nearly vivid enough. It's a nice gray, but I would have liked I would have liked the blue to be to be a bit more Mediterranean bluey. It was really pretty. It was it was it was that shade of blue. You can't see that. It was that shade of blue. We'll play with this when we here in just a minute when we get to that. He also showed us how to make uh, fixative, non-aerosol fixative. And let's see. Then the next one we made. This, the next one we made was this yellow. And the the first one we used the uh, gum arabic, I think. The second one we used the tragacanth. Tragacanth emulsion binder, and it's a little harder. It's a little more fragile. A little harder. And then we made uh, this one. Iron Ferris. This is uh, it's just an earth tone red 
rust color and it, it is quite vivid. We didn't use nearly as much um, we didn't use near, nearly as much much as the of the uh, uh, calcium carbonate in this. Like I said, over the next few weeks, I think we'll talk about how each one is made, and we'll spend some time. Maybe, perhaps, we'll even make some. And and I'll share recipes with you. You know, I have to buy supplies, paying for that class. I still have to. I'm not. I'm. This is this this. Can you see this? That's what I don't like. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I have to pay for that class, and I'm still not finished paying for that class. I'm kind of wiped out financially <laughs> with, my, with my art spending money. This, uh, this graphite stick, this is the one I'm going to take. I'm going to take this one to figure drawing tomorrow night and see how I like drawing with this. I may actually draw on top of all of this here in just a minute with this draw on top of this mess with this when I'm done. Now I'm going to take a little bit of water and smooth those out. Don't have to, just want to. I feel like that would be nice. That makes it so nice. Let's start with this. Start with this blue. Yeah, that that earth tone red. I mean, it's really you. you when I hit that with the water, you'll see how vibrant that is. You can already see where it's starting to mix in with my. <laughs> yeah, wear latex glove, wear finger cots. Those are good suggestions. Jay Z said wear finger cots. Uh, Kimberly said wear weight latex gloves. There's actually little paper sleeves that you can put around them. If you if you form them to the right size, I can make little paper sleeves to put around them. There's all kinds of things that could be done, but it's always been the, the main the main two reasons I never really got into pastels was the the dry pastels make my fingers feel chalky and I've I've just it's been an issue from childhood. And the oil pastels um, are too soft. I found I found that the, I find that oil pastels are just too soft. They they just dissolve under my under the pressure of my hand, and I never developed the light the light touch necessary to to make them to make them not just like mashing a grease grease pencil, you know. Just never got there. So yeah, look how intense that color was. If that had been any of the other colors, that would just be wicked intense. I mean, wicked primary red or blue or anything else. I, I like the iron color, but I just really like the intensity of that. I just kind of wish we'd have done it with a green or a blue or something besides rust, rust brown. All right, hang on. Let's get these. Let's see what happens to the charcoal. See, the charcoal is just charcoal. There's no, there's no gum arabic in it. There's no water soluble stuff in it. So it's just, there's not a whole lot of flow to it, but it still, it still moves a little. 
Okay. I'm going to dry this just a little bit before I move on to the watercolors. But it was a fun it was a fun workshop. I'll show you pictures. Where's my phone? Here's my phone. While that's drying. Ah! Tell you what, while that's we'll let that dry under the fan and light just a minute. That way I can show you. I can pull up and show you pictures. Um it was a Mediterranean blue, and it was uh, uh, Jay Zed's asking what the what the pigments were. These were these actually came from the pigment company, from a pigment company. It was Mediterranean blue, uh, ferric iron, and uh, I don't know some kind of yellow. <laughs> you think I'd have written it down? I was telling my daughter last night. You know the difference between goofing off and science is when you write stuff down. If, if you write down every step of what you what you expect to do, and then write down every step that you actually took, and including any deviations, then when you discover something new, you can reproduce it. Otherwise, you're just goofing off. I was just goofing off. I didn't write anything down. I'm going to show you real quick though. This was my lab partner. And she's just stunning. Look at that. She's just stunning. She was my lab partner. She'd have been a redhead. I'd have been in so much trouble. She was just stunning. Julie, uh, very sharp. Very, very, very sharp lady. Uh, she was my lab partner. Uh, Marissa. Ah, Marissa, Alyssa, and her mother. Their mother. I can't remember their mother's name. You're real cool, I think it is. The one in the middle goes to figure drawing with me, and the other one, the one in the blue is her sister, and then the one in red is her mother. They were there. Uh, just some really great people we met in this, in this, uh, in this workshop. I met in this workshop. Uh, Graham and Jamal. Graham's the one in the, on the left doing the work while Jamal looks on. Most of the time it was Jamal doing the work, but this time it was Graham. Uh, Graham's the one with the with the other YouTube channel. He's going to he's going to get in touch with me. <clears throat> and then Rick's Rick's is the instructor. Let's, let me get a better picture of Rick's. Where'd my picture of Rick's go? But this cat makes all of his... Well, that's, that's a horrible picture of Rick's, but there's Rick's. It was his lab. <laughs> no, 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 we didn't go out and dig up pigments. We In the chat room, they're asking if we, if we dug up our own pigments. We didn't go out and dig up the pigments, uh, we, but we did use the same pigments that they would have used during the Renaissance. So... Uh, they would have gone to Iran and got the cobalt. They would have gone to this place and got the. They would have gone to uh, Somalia and got the got the uh, gum arabic from the acacia trees. They they would have had. These were things that they would have bought in the spice trade. That would they would have been part of the spice trade. So these are the things that that would have been available to them uh, at the time. So everything that we did was stuff that would have been available to them at the time. Except I, I'm not sure that they had PVA. I'm not sure that they had plastic glue like we used. But this is dry enough. I'm going to swap back over here. And I'm going to add some watercolors. And the watercolor, like I said, this is cracked because we didn't put enough honey in it. The watercolor was especially fun to make because you have to have... Uh, ground glass and you have to have a, a, a muller that's that's ground also and you sit there with your muller and you grind the pigment into the solution and you just continue to grind it and continue to grind it and continue to grind it until you can draw it out without ha having any any granular marks and I'll show you what I mean by that when we painted with it 
this is as far as we got before we lost interest and I don't know if you can tell or not but you can see there's a little bit of granulation right there when we started it was really bad but right just right there there's just a little bit of granulation we went a little further than that and then stopped uh, mostly because we got bored with it but if we'd have added more honey we wouldn't have this cracking and she's sitting there I, I did the mulling for a while and then she did the mulling for a while and when she did the mulling <laughs> when she did the mulling we got this spot oh, can you see it that spot right there on my notebook right just a just a little glob of paint on my notebook and just like if it was in my studio there's a glob of paint where I don't want a glob of paint I pulled it up with my finger and I went to flick it back into everything else right and just about the time I went to flick it she comes around with the muller right there and I flicked the back of her hand just back hard just flicked the back of her hand the paint went down her finger and she just stopped and she just looked at me and I'm, I'm surprised she didn't backhand me <laughs> she's she's really kind of an a-type personality I'm surprised she didn't just backhand me but she stopped and she just why why are you touching me kind of look and I'm oh my god I'm so sorry I I flicked this poor lady just just flicked her for, for no apparent reason just assaulted her in class <laughs> I felt so dumb <laughs> if, you, if you've ever done anything stupid in your life you feel almost like I felt so let's try this let's try this pigment and see if it was worth being flicked for let's try this watercolor and see if it was wor worth being flicked for look how smooth that is I think it was worth being flicked for. Well, I don't know. I wasn't flicked. I think it was worth flicking a stranger for. And Julie, if you're watching, I'm still embarrassed. <laughs> but it really is. It's nice and smooth. bright vivid colors because it's practically pure pigment and gum arabic yeah that's nice <coughs> let's see Anywhere else we want to do? Let's do this right here. All right. So yeah, that's really nice. And then let's try this. Let's try this. Uh, let's try this blue. This blue is was gorgeous, wet. Dry, dried kind of dark. But it was truly gorgeous wet. Who daddy likes. This is not, by the way the stuff from Iran. He did not share that with us. If he had any at all, I don't I don't think he would have shared it with us because you know you can't just go to Iran and get more. He had a student that was a world traveler that somehow managed to bring some back from Iran. Who knows how long ago. Big chunk of it. Very expensive, like five thousand dollars size chunk of it and the guy shared a pinch of it with everybody in the class and then left some with with Rick's and honestly who doesn't need friends like that so yeah I dig the blue what do you think you think I should do the whole background with the colors that I made or you think I should 
add colors that I wanted to make and didn't have. So we don't have any red, we don't have any real red. Let's see what they look like on top of each other. Let's see if I add if I add some yellow here. And let's see where else. If I add some yellow here. Let's see what kind of green we get with this blue. We may not. Nope. I, it doesn't look very green to me. It's kind of green. What do you think? Kind of a foresty green. I don't know. Like I said, I just wish we'd have gone ahead and made some, made some red. Kimberly says go with the colors I made. So let's fill in some gaps here. This is the graphite stick. I'm gonna. This is just the background, so I'm gonna. You know, I'm gonna paint acrylic on top of it anyway. Let's see if the graphite stick is water soluble if it has any slide because it's got the ball of clay in it and it's got the, the uh, the emulsion in it so it has a little slide to it huh. just a little bit Just a little bit. But yeah, I would say if you ever find yourself in a situation to to take an artist workshop is probably not considered couth to physically assault your lab partner. not, as we say, a cooth. Really, I'm surprised she didn't, she didn't just backhand me. She was way more emotionally mature than me, though. Of course, I guess that's not really saying much. I would have backhanded me. All right. Now let's do one more thing. And let's break out this this ink that we made. He told us to bring little canisters he told us to he told us to, to uh, bring little canisters and when I got the email that said bring little canisters I couldn't find any and I went to Walmart and I looked all over for little canisters and at the last second I go to the party aisle and I find these little these little vials of, of uh, bubbles and, and it was like 12 of them for three bucks 
And so I brought them home, and we emptied all the bubble stuff out and let the kids play with the bubble stuff. And I kept, and they washed the vials out for me. And so I ended up with a, the, these little vials for the, I thought we were going to have more stuff like this. But, well, that smells funny. This is, uh, this is Oak Gall Ink. And that's the original black ink and what they did was they took these are oak gulls if you don't if you're unfamiliar these are oak gulls and these are wasp nests in an oak tree they they lay they make these little nests in an oak tree and then when all their eggs hatch the the leaf or the twig or the or the whatever falls off and they, these oak gulls fall to the ground and so you can collect them underneath the oak trees and they they, uh, you crumble them up. You don't grind them up. You crumble them up and you boil them for a day, three hours a day, whatever. Put them in a slow cooker if you want to, and then let them set. He let this set for three weeks, and and then we added rust from a nail. I'm going to show you the, this picture real quick. We added rust from a nail. I don't know if I'm gonna if you'll be able to see this or not, but the the orangey side is what the oak gall mixture looked like, and then the black side is what happened when the iron mixed in. When we when we brushed the when we brushed the rust from the nail into it, it immediately turned black. And he said the longer it sits, the the darker black it gets. And so. I don't know if he meant that the longer you keep it in a jar or the more it's exposed to air, but I made this on Saturday. And it's not very strong, is it? I tell you what, I'm way more impressed with my ink brush. One of the ingredients as a preservative was thymol, which is actually thyme oil, the herb thyme. And uh, I can smell it in my ink. It's, it's, it smells really strong in my ink. That's the preservative. It smells like clove cigarettes can't talk arting I'm not even really arting right now I'm just outlining Yeah, it has a really really strong scent of cloves and thyme or whatever. Almost done. See, it's picking up the iron from that paint, from that uh, pastel. I think, I think I'm going to call that a background. How are we doing on time? 
you want to see what the mix in the red and the yellow looks like? Well, we've got a little bit of that going on right there. It didn't give us an orange, I can tell you that. It gave us more of a brown. If I added more red to that, it'd be brown. If I add more yellow to it, I don't know. Starts to look more ochery. So I'm going to call that a background. And I am going to hit that with some clear uh, matte spray paint. Everybody put your masks on. Everything's going nuts because I touched my computer. I touched my keyboard. Everybody, put your masks on because we don't want anybody exposed to the fumes. You know what? I better dry it first. So yeah, I mean, it was a lot of fun. We made this up. We, we paid uh, on top of our on top of our course fee, we had a material fee. Which I don't know why he didn't just go ahead and add the materials fee into the course fee and, and call it the same thing. Actually, I do because the materials fee was non-refundable. You paid the material fee, and then you couldn't make the class. You didn't. You didn't get that money back. That's that's why he separated that out. I don't know. Can you tell this? You can't see. I don't know if you can tell, but it's getting darker. And he said the, the more it dries, the darker it'll get. And the longer it sits, the darker it'll get. This would be a good time to have a musical interlude. I used to edit the videos and cut all this out. But I I don't know, you can almost watch it get darker as it dries. Nothing more exciting than watching paint dry. I don't know, Pamela, what do you think? I think I, I think I ought to subdue it just a little bit before I try to put a, before I try to paint on top of it, because the, that, that earth red is really vibrant, really, really overpowering.
wonder how long that would take to dry in this humidity if I just let it dry. Who knows what I'm doing to the pages underneath? I'm probably melting the pages underneath. Yeah. All right. Well, you can see it did. It did darken up. Well, maybe you can't see. You can see that it did darken up as you hit it with the heat and as it dried out. You can see we got some. It got a little darker in places. Holly Ann. Looks like a Matisse painting. She says. So I think, I think what I'm going to do, I think that I'm going to subdue it with just a little bit of white. Just a little bit of white. Everybody put your masks on. Want to make sure... Want to make sure that you're wearing your masks so that you don't die of sprucing tunes. So I'm just going to hit it with just a little bit of white. Just to subdue it just a little bit. Just so that when I come back on top of it with the, with the uh, acrylic, the acrylic will be more bold. And then I'm going to hit it with some uh, matte finish clear. Um, fixative. Make sure we don't have any dusty flyaways. And I'm going to stop and I'm going to open a garage door before I pass up dead on camera. <laughs> Because I am not wearing my mask. Wait, yes I am, you can't tell. Of course I'm wearing a mask. away before I hurt myself. Put that away. Came out here. I've come out here a couple of times now to draw or paint. And I spent so much time putting stuff away that I had failed to put away the last time. You would think that I would learn that lesson your stuff away so that you're ready to do it again. You would think that I would learn that lesson. But that's just not our style. All right. So let's see here. Let's draw. Um,
There we go. I like the way that pencil, I like the way that graphite stick works. Table. That's so much fun. I still didn't find my yellow paint. Here it is. All right. We. I wonder what the dog's excited about. Can you hear the dog barking? I wonder what the dog's excited about. Somehow I got paint on my shirt already. Now the technology is just running away. Kimberly's in the chat room. Technology is just running away. Running away. Fun times. We're about to get invaded. Here come the invaders. I can't see you, buddy. Hello, people. They can't see you, buddy. He so desperately wants to be on camera he's kind of a ham I don't know where he gets it I have no idea where he gets that nonsense See, I managed to get it on the book and not on the not on the paper where I wanted it. That's that's handy. Talk, Harding. Babe. I scare you? Oh, yes. I'm a scary child. You are a scary child, that's for sure. Scary child.
Cool. Cool. All right. And we need some white. Let's just use this. It's all about that primitive paint, you know, the phone and the mouse were offended. I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that. Kimberly's in the chat room explaining why my my phone and my mouse decided to take a dive off the table. It makes perfect sense to me. Gotta hold your tongue just right for this part. back and we're going to put some shading under here, around here, and around here, and along here, and under 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 here, like that. Exact opposite on this side. Like that. Maybe a little bit of sheen right there. Lights. Where's my brush pen? Who took my brush pen? You know I love my brush pen. Actually, I think I put my brush pen in my art bag. I took it with me. Because I love my brush pen. Let's see. What do I do with my art bag? Well, I found a brush pen. Let's see if this will work. Mm. Got to make sure you keep the paint out of it, though. shoot
there we go. There we go. Now then, for the journaling part, let's see here. What what's a good color to journal with? I can use white, but the white. Let's see. We'll just go ahead and use white. Why? Spend fifty dollars. for art supplies. Are there two P's in supplies? It's S-U-P-P-L-Y-L-I-E-S, right? Crap. Paint on my phone. How do I get how do I get paint on my phone? Supplies. Yeah, two peas. Easy now. Don't get carried away. When? You can make them Four. Five hundred. <laughs> what were you talking about? Buying a big bag of pigments. And we're talking about buying a big bag of acacia tree, gum Arabic, we started adding it up, you can buy a lot of Windsor Newton watercolors for, for what it costs to make yellow. You can buy a lot of Windsor Newton watercolors for what it costs to make yellow. Seriously, my good my good brush pen is missing. 
I need to find my brush pen. Can't talk. Harding. Alright, I'm done. Calling it done. He was also offended. So there you go. Why spend fifty dollars for our supplies when you can make them for five hundred? Guys, thank you so much for joining me. You know, I look forward to this every week. I think I just got black paint all over my face or ink or something all over my face, which will come in handy because tomorrow I have a presentation to give. Eh, who knows? But you know I look forward to this every week when I get to art with my besties. And I enjoy it so much. But... We're going to finish tonight off a little differently. Normally we dance at this point. But you need to subscribe to this channel. You need to subscribe to this channel. You need to subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to the Artistic Biker now. Oh, that was horrible. Let's try it again. You need to subscribe to this channel. You need to subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to the Artistic Biker now. There we go. That's much better. <laughs> and then last week, and then last week we did this. And I kept hoping that a dog or something would walk by or a kid or something. And this is about when Linda Ray showed up and she said I was frozen and I, I was just laughing. <laughs> ah. We can still dance though. We can dance if we want to. We can leave your friends behind.